But uh, during my time in church, of course, I learned quite a few stories. And, and one thing about the Bible is whether you read it or not, believe it or not, whatever the case may be, there's a lot of good parables and stories inside of the Bible. So I'm going to take you guys to the very first one. You got Adam and Eve here. These are the only two people on planet Earth. If you're the only two people in the city of Winter Park, that's like crazy and weird, right? <laughs> hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, they're just, they're just living and existing. They don't know anything is wrong. They don't know that they're naked. They don't know that they don't know what they don't know until the Apple thing happens and everything like that. Right? Who's at fault for that? <laughs> Eve, That's not, not, the not Steve. <laughs> she brought about the downfall. You know, and I was with a close group of, of, of kids. They have no idea that like, their life is like, you know, in shambles and fucked right now. Like everything else that's going around them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kids are so innocent. Made me think of Adam and Ethan just from the innocence part of you just don't know what you don't know. You know, when I was a kid growing up, I really didn't know something was wrong with my family and what in my household till I got to like night grade center. That is interesting because th there is, I mean, the, the innocence of the child, you know, you'll, you'll see how they like observe something and process it. And it comes from that like innocent, not knowing any better place. But there's a part where like this life is like, is rough yeah. and, and like you know and they're gonna have to be prepared for that do you start introducing adversity like when they're little or do you just kind of like keep everything sunflowers right. how are you not an atheist <laughs> with well, all that church well and that leads to the point where i i don't I, i'm not attending church as i don't i don't go to church now right? all right good well, that's not good i'm not saying <laughs> yes it is i'm not a converted you, atheist you gave anything. enough I'm, I've, I've given up <laughs> six, seven days a week. I mean, I extrapolate that. that over to Sundays. You probably got about another two decades in the, <laughs> in the church bank. But uh, during my time in church, of course, I learned quite a few stories. And uh, and one thing about the Bible is whether you know whether you read it or not, believe it or not, whatever the case may be, there's a lot of good parables and stories inside of the Bible. So I'm gonna take you guys to the very first one, which is Adam and Eve. All right, now. Again, whether you believe in it or not, this is interesting, and it is um, uh, integral to the story I'm telling here, right? Okay. Uh, so, you, you, you know, you got Adam and Eve here, and <laughs> these are the only two people on planet Earth. Like, like if you were the only two people in, in the city of Winter Park, that's, like, crazy and weird, right? <laughs> but on the planet Earth, you have two people. And these people, they have no idea. They just... They're just living for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. They just they're just living and existing, existing. They don't know anything is wrong. They don't know that they're naked. They don't know that for real. Like they don't like they just they don't know what they don't know. Right. Right. Until the Apple thing happens and everything like that. And you can, you know, take from that what you want. Right? Who's at fault for that? <laughs> Listen, Eve, that's not, not, the point. not Steve. <laughs> I'm not going. It there. was Eve. <laughs> it wasn't Steve. <laughs> she, she brought about the downfall. And and just to talk about the innocence there from those people and <laughs> those two people. <laughs> and um, you know, and I was with you know close group of of, of kids, and it, and you know what was weird was like they had no idea. Like that, that that their life is like fucked. You know what I mean? Like, like Adam and Eve. No, these kids that um that I, that I was around, that I was just with recently, and like you know, all they still all they know is you know play candy, cakes, whatever. And oh, these are actual is, kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. The parallel to the stories are their innocence is so high that they have like they have just they just don't know what they don't know. They have no idea. <laughs> like their life is like you know in shambles and fucked right now like everything else that's going around there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you know, um, and you just want to do whatever you possibly you know can to help that situation because it's you know because the kids are so are so innocent. You know what I mean? Yeah, to, to yeah. that To that degree, and I don't know. It made me think of Adam and Ethan just from the innocence part of you just don't know. You know what you don't know. You know, like you know when I was a a, a kid growing up, I really didn't know. Something was wrong with my family and what in my household till I got to like night grade center and I met like John Cabbage and those guys. <laughs> like until then, because even going to Maitland Middle, you know, I went to Hungerford, you know, it was just right in the heart of Edenville. Every kid that's going there, everybody's poor, everybody's fucked. 
Okay. And then even going to Maitland, it was almost like segregated. It was like a it was like yeah, it was white kids, black kids, Spanish kids, whatever, but you know, all the Edenville kids are riding on these two buses and into Maitland. We all hang with each other, eat with each other. You know, it's like it was almost it really was almost segregated. Yeah. And I, it wasn't until, you know, getting to Winter Park where you know, I was like, oh, I'm supposed to have things and, and uh, I'm supposed to experience and do things. Like, you know, I thought Disney was just on a movie. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, I could actually supposed to, maybe I was have, supposed to have gone to this place already. Right, right. By the ripe age of 15. <laughs> and, um, you know, and you just, you you don't know until until, until you know. You know, I don't know. Yeah. It's just a, that, a that is interesting because th- there is, I mean, the, the innocence of the child. And, like, it's kind of refreshing to be around little kids sometimes because, yeah. you you know, you'll you'll see how they like observe something and process it, and it comes from that like innocent, not knowing any better place, and it, it can be like refreshing to you to be around them going through that process. But you also enter like that dynamic of like you're supposed to fill kids with confidence and positive experience and this and that, but there's a part where like this life is like is rough, yeah, and, and like you know, and they're gonna have to be prepared for that, and like. How do you address that preparation element? You know, do you start introducing adversity like when they're little or do you just kind of like keep everything sunflowers and roses until all of a sudden it hits them in the face like a brick? Exactly. Um, it, exactly. it is a challenge, man. It, it really is uh, as far as that goes. But I, I mean, as, a, as an adult, it can be refreshing to put yourself in the company of a child and kind of like watch how they process the world and the things that they look at and what they take out of it. Because, you know, like we all become cynical as we kind of go through this process, but you look at them and you're like, you know, they seem happy. Their day's pretty simple. And you're like, man, hang on to this. <laughs> hang on to this. Man. <laughs> it's not going to stay this way forever. Let me assure you. No, it's just not, man. It's just not. It's, it, you know, and it's funny also talking to my older nieces and nephews uh, as they're entering like the, you know, the um, adulthood, you know, 18, yeah. 19 or whatever. And it's like, yeah, you know, we tried to tell you guys. <laughs> <laughs> like in years, man. Like, yeah. you know, but uh, good luck now, you know. You know, you know, I mean, in that vein, it's like a super tough position to be in is when like you're a parent but you, and your kids are becoming like adults and a lot of the like really negative, inescapable aspects of life kind of come raining down on them. And like you said, yeah, we tried to tell you about this, but it's like they're telling you something that like they've experienced that's just negative. There's really no positive to it. And in your mind, you're like, how do I respond to this? Like, do, do I tell you the truth and basically be like, yeah, 95% of this is really miserable and you're going to probably want to be dead for the majority of it. But for some strange reason, you're kind of supposed to soldier on <laughs> and hope that it gets better. But in truth, it's not. Yeah. But, you know, good luck the next 50 years or so. <laughs> because that's life. That's I mean, really it's very it is, hard to, to do that. You know, yeah. it's, it's just it's tough. Yeah, it is tough, man. It is tough. But you got to soldier through. Um, uh, you know, we, we had a little technical uh, echo issue in the beginning. So, again, you're back on the bench. On the bench podcast, Bubba Pink, home of sports, music, and mayhem. Uh, appreciate our early our early viewers here that catch the problem. Let us know about it. Uh, appreciate you, Chris Ebony. Uh, shout out to Coach. He's in the building. Uh, appreciate you guys. And, um, and yeah, let's get, let's get to the show, man. Um, uh, and uh, because of the echo, again, we're telling you guys what we we're going to talk about today Dwight Howard NBA Kodak Deion Sanders Florida State all of that good stuff man yeah. uh, here shout out to one of our sponsors here royal 13 thebrandcom again that is royal 13 thebrandcom use promo code Bubba Pink and get all of your fly gear is that like a, a, a woman's cut off hoodie there it is it is it my is. daughter wears those for the record oh man yeah, yeah. those are very popular with with, 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 with the younger women there yeah and uh, they have a lot of other stuff. Thankfully, well. not so much with older women. <laughs> it depends on what kind of shape they're in these days. 